Hello and welcome to Desert Rat Fiber Arts. I'm Desert Rat, but you can call me Lloyd. Today we're working on the second part of our breed study. Today we'll be working with Cheviot, Cheviot, Chevio, however it's pronounced. I believe it's Cheviot. That's the way most people say it. So, um, again, this is from Hearthside Fibers. I paid for these myself. I did not, not sponsored in any way. So, um, and I will leave a link in the description below um, for this particular uh, part of the breed study, these 12 in the international um, breeds. So, uh, I've already started filling out my worksheet for this. Um, and then we're going to take a look at this again. Uh, the Chevy top, of course, on here, it says it's from England, Scotland. 30 to 35 microns, a staple length of 100 millimeters or four inches. So let's see how that actually lines up in the field guide to fleece. So uh, let's see the origin border areas between England and Scotland. The fleece weight is five to ten pounds or two and a quarter to four and a half kilograms. Staple length is four inches to five inches, so 10 to 13 centimeters. The diameters are 34 to 33 microns. A natural color white. Um, and it says uh, they're durable without being harsh. Cheviot fleece is also dense, firm, and versatile. Its staples are rectangular with slightly pointed tips, and the Cheviot family its unique three-dimensional crimp is bold and uniform with consistent quality from butt to tip. The ideal fleece will, fleece will contain no hair, camp, or colored fibers. The shorter staples will hand card well, but there's usually enough left for length for flicking or combing, and good Cheviot is a pleasure to spin. Um, Cheviot wool is chalky and so lacks the brilliance of the long wools, but it dyes well and clearly. Uh, the best uses for it is the, the finer fleeces, although not luxury texture, will make pleasant sweaters, socks, and next to the skin garments, while the coarser ones will yield great everyday blankets, pillows, and outerwear. Also says uh, Cheviots are very accurate sheep. Because of this, many people who raise border collies and other herding dogs use Cheviots to train them, formerly called border Cheviot. This breed is still sometimes referred to as a South Country country Cheviot to distinguish it from the larger North country Cheviot. And um, there's a picture of what they look like. So I believe this will show up fairly well. And I didn't show a picture of the um, the other ones, which I was pronouncing completely wrong while well, I was saying Chirolus or something like that. It's um, Chirole. And that's the Chirole that we did last week. Um, so let's take a look at the actual fiber itself. So let me go ahead and pull that out of here. Um, again, it's not a super soft fiber. Got a little bit of VM in this, not a big deal. It'll come out and spinning. It's, it's soft enough. It's a little scratchy in my opinion, but, um, We'll see what it comes out after we spin it. So let me pull uh, off a staple length here. Let me grab that. Pull here. Pull that apart. Still pretty good long staple length here. So uh, where's my ruler here? Tape measure. Um, go from one end to the other and Am I doing this wrong? Let me just grab maybe a little bit like this. Because I'm getting like six inches here of staple length. Yeah, I mean, it's way out to a little bit past six inches. So I'm going to say, yeah, four to six inches. Wow. It's actually pretty good staple length for this. So, I am not 
spinning on my Nano this time. I'm going to bring my Kiwi in here. I do have some um, uh, uh, Romney on it at the moment that I'm spinning up, but I can just pull the bobbin off. I've got a couple of empty extra bobbins, and we will spin this on the on the Kiwi. So let me get that set up for you, and we'll get that zoomed in so that you can watch me uh, attempt to spin this up.
that's it for the spin. Um, I three pot. I did chain ply on it. Um, just figured it was easier to do that than <laughs> trying to do a two ply on it. So here's the finished yarn. We got approximately 38 yards of worsted, roughly about nine wraps per inch. Very very drapey. Got a little bit of a spring to it. Not not a whole heck of a lot, but a little bit, a little bit. I think it came out fairly well. This has been washed. It's still a little damp. I'm, it's not 100% dry yet, but um, came out fairly nice. Had a couple areas where it was uh, coming apart on me while I was flying it, but that's just uh, my spinning. <laughs> nothing to do with the fiber itself um i think it's a actually a, a very good fiber it's um uh, at least this particular stuff isn't super next to the skin soft but of course there goes that garbage truck again <laughs> just like last week um Again, yeah, not next to the skin soft. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could use it for hats or a, a sweater that you're going to wear over a shirt or something. It might be fairly nice with. Um, and again, lots of drape. This would probably work well blended with, with alpaca or something like that if you wanted to, to go that way. So, Cheviot or Cheviot. Cheviot. I looked up the pronunciation, Cheviot. <laughs> um, worth spinning. I would definitely spin it again. Um, I don't know if I got out of my way again for this particular. It's not as soft as I would like it to be, but it's not bad. If if if, a, if there was a good price on a fleece or or um, some the fiber that was available to you, definitely worth buying and definitely definitely worth spinning so if you have any experience spinning shiviot please let me know we'd all love to, to hear your experiences with it as well so that's it um next week is going to be corydale which i've spun tons of i've got an entire corydale fleece in the other room that needs to be processed as well uh so uh, that was not a new one to me um but it'd be interesting to see how this particular prep it um, spins up as compared to uh, the others that I've worked with in the past. So, until next time, happy crafting! <laughs>